Hi, this is Brian Haberlin for uh, 3D World Magazine, uh, and we're going to show uh, some, well, lighting. We're going to talk about lighting in uh, Poser. Uh, so I'm going to do a new scene. No. And you'll see by default I've got three Omni lights here. Okay. Um, now, you can set up poser, so let's say I set it up with nothing here and I take the lights and I change this to a spotlight, I take a shadow or make one ray tra tracing and then if you go and this is stuff not covered in the print part of this tutorial but it's still valuable um, if you go up and you tell that to be the preferred state that's how it would always come in. So if you wanted to come in with one light or two lights or 17 lights, that's the way it always would come in. So it would save you time if that if you use that stuff quite often. Okay, but um, by default it's set up to bring in three shadow casting or sh three shadow casting omni lights. Okay, which you know you could do a good job with. Um, but I find when you're lighting complex scenes, uh, you can't since you can't really move the you can only move the omni lights around a scene. You can't move them like between an object or something like that. You can move it over an object, around the other side, but you can't put it in between or, or place it uh, specifically in an area. I find if you, it's more, it's easier to work with uh, point lights. Uh, but let's go ahead. I also find it easier to start with no lights and add lights. So let's go ahead and use this handy script utility delete lights if you have a gazillion lights this is much easier because you can't just select a light and hit delete you have to go to this little trash can down there which is a bit of a pain so I'm gonna hit OK it's not undoable so just remember that when you do it I'm gonna load in a couple of props so we can see the lights doing I think that's important I'm sure you'll agree I'm going to load in from the primitives folder. I'm using Poser Pro 2010, but these primitives are in all the versions, so I'm loading in the ball. And there's our ball. You'll notice it's black because there's no lights in the room. I'm going to duplicate it so you can see how the manipulations of the lights moving around and stuff work better uh, with two. You can see how easily it is to move around than just a single, single object. So. Edit, duplicate ball. I'm going to grab it, move it up here. Okay, we are going to click this little create a light button and create a light. Now you'll notice it comes in as a spotlight, and you'll notice too, it doesn't come in in the center of the room. It points to the center of the grid, I should say, not the room, uh, but it doesn't come in in the center of it. And if you keep adding them, like, let's add a couple more. They can go even like appear there and still point in that same direction. Okay, so I'm going to delete these extra ones that I made. Now, let's say you had a complex scene and you were adding some more lights to it. So you had, you know, a hallway and other rooms and all kinds of stuff, and the light comes in not in the middle of it. It makes it a pain in the ass to find. Um, so. The easiest way to find it, pretend there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, trees and stuff like that, is to simply go to the parameters and go down to the trans and just zero these out. And that'll bring it right back to grid center. Okay? So, um, I usually uh, work with spotlights these days because I find them they match up with more of the lighting I do in natural environments than spotlights. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and in properties switch this to a point light. Yeah, I see that did an interesting thing. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can undo it. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, bop that right back to that default position. If I take the spotlight and move it back to the, uh, again, we're covering things that aren't in the short Q&A, but I guess that's better for the people who are watching the vid anyway. Uh, you really could do a very, very long tutorial on lighting in Poser. Um, I think people are, are mystified by it. Okay, so properties. Now, instead of jumping to spotlight, then point light, I'm going to point light, 
and it'll go right where it was. It will go to that zero zero trans place. But that was interesting that when we went to infinite and popped back there, I've, I've never done that before. Okay, so we have our spotlight. We know where it is. It's right there. I'm going to zoom in a little closer to the scene. I'm using the trans. These are the. This is the only tool you need to mess with the point lights is the translate tool. I can move it up and down. If I hold the control key or the command tree key on the Apple, you can see I can move it back and forward. It's all very interactive, very easy to place the light where I want to unless I drop it, <laughs> which I just did. Uh, well, that's good. I think I probably stuck it in one of the, the balls by accident. Well, let's go ahead and do what I said to do before. Let's go ahead and take it in the properties. and See, because I mean, there's an example. All right, where is the light? The light is gone, right? Yeah, actually, somehow, uh, there I added an extra light. Let's just undo that. Okay, we're just going to select the light. Okay, let's go ahead and follow the tutorial ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and move the light back to zero. 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 There it is. Uh, another trick too, sometimes this can be a little small depending on your display. I, I, I lowered my display uh, for the recording. The recording here. Um, but sometimes it can be small to see those lights. All you need to do is go ahead and scale it up. You can see it doesn't affect the uh, light on the, uh, the objects. It just makes it easier to see. So there, I scaled it up so it'll be even harder to lose. But you can see now how you know you can really see where you're actively placing it. Again, holding the troll key, I can bring it back here. Let's say I want to bring it between the two, right between the two. You can see right where I'm between the two, and you can even use that ground shadow as another guide. Okay, um, and you can also mess with you know the different values of the light and see how they affect the objects very interactively. So it's great to set up like that, and then you know. Eventually, if you need a fill light, you know, I mean, because that light's not going to do everything for you, you know, add another light and make it one of those big global lightings, like either the dif the diffuse or the infinite, and that will give you, you know, a bounce light into the scene that will that will kind of deal with the rest of the, give you like almost an ambient light automatically with it. But really, your 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 spotlight, your pin light right here is what's driving the interesting part of the uh, the lighting. Okay, so that's one. I'm going to tr try and do another one of these lighting ones sometime soon, just because really we could get into this for quite a long time. But this is a very nice practical primer. Another um, thing that I use uh, as well is uh, quite often, especially as a huge time saver, if you're lighting a room with like recessed ceilings and you have uh, lights, objects in there, but you don't have uh, the light set up in there yet. Uh, there's a great free utility uh, that is in the article. Uh, we'll give you the URL, um, but it's uh, let me go window Python scripts. Go ahead and go to my Python scripts. You know, Program Smith Micro. I don't have a a uh, button set up for it. Snap to. And then what you do is you have your light. And let's say these objects were the things that I need to have be lights. Okay. Uh, I could just simply hit Snap to. Oops, I said with ball. You'll either work, you'll work with, with uh, objects and props. So work with uh, the light. You have to have it selected first, snap to, click where you want it to go, and boom, that's where it goes. That's really handy when you're doing a lot of lighting and you kind of already have the scene set up and you know where the lights need to go. You can just load a light, click the object it needs to go to, boom, it's there. Okay. Uh, anyway, there you go. Um, a short little bit on lighting. I hope it was helpful. This is Brian Haverland. Thanks.